they are not talking about Let me just Uncle add Adrian. something. Three weeks ago I was in Germany and I heard Angela Merkel say, we live in a post-fact society. <laughs> I said, if Angela Merkel decided we live in a post-fact society, <laughs> Sorry, it is, just it is completely very, exactly. to, to support your thesis. Exactly. I don't know what a past fact society, it will not be a democratic society, that's for sure. Yeah, but what's so troubling also is our reliance on purported facts that the media presented that turned out to be completely not reflections of reality as well, right? And so there's this, there's this kind of paradoxical or ironic or, or flipping of the whole issue of whether to trust or not to trust facts, right? Because it was, it, was, it was Trump who was the one who was saying, you know, don't trust this stuff, basically. Mm -hmm. And we did, in a certain way, right? We trusted the New York Times all the time, yes. every day. Every day I looked we at that thing to see, like, what was it, 91% today? Okay, we're good, we you know? So and we trusted Nate Silver, too. Completely, yeah. right? I mean, I, it's just like, any time I had any question, it's like, well, Nate is going to have the answer, right? But they were not facts. They were not facts. They were predictions based on the assumption that human beings behave, and those behaviors can be predictable. Well, it's precisely I, the opposite of the mm -hmm. argument Arendt is making, and she's actually critical of that assumption that underlies behavioral science, and I think that was part of the problem. But with regard to facts, I think we have to, one, see them as constraints, uh, conditioning uh, this agonistic struggle that we have to undertake. But also, it, uh, we have to know how to mobilize them. We have to learn how to mobilize them in this agonistic struggle. So they are not just constraints, but they have to be mobilized in certain ways.